Honeymoon on the Moon A Science a Fiction Comedy Poltu has decided to marry Shravani and go to the moon for their honeymoon. It is about the world 100 years later. So going to the moon for honeymoon then is not a big deal. It will be a little expensive, that's all. Poltu calculated that all expenses included, his bank balance will become half. He has told Shravani about going to the moon. Shravani is ecstatic. Going to the moon for honeymoon doesn't come everyone's way. Hearing all this, Poltu's father's face became glum. He said, Leave aside this wasteful expenditure and concentrate on the business. Poltu's mother contorted her face and said, While he must settle down after marriage, instead he is going to the moon for honeymoon. Whatever the others might say, once Poltu has decided to go to the moon, he will certainly go. He gives a damn to what others say. To go to the moon first, one has to get a visa. So, he has to take Srabuni along. There won't be any problem to get visa. Poltu has made all arrangements. They are not planning to stay on the moon permanently. They will have a two-month honeymoon and come back. But if they like the moon very much, if Srabuni doesn't want to come from the moon, if he can get a good job on the moon, then it's a different option. Otherwise, Poltu will spend two months with Srabuni for honeymoon on the moon and come back. Before leaving for the moon, both Poltu and Srabuni will undergo medical tests. Next, there will be training for seven days where they will be taught everything so that they don't have difficulties on the moon. The gravitational pull on the moon is one-sixth of that of the earth. How would they feel when they will be able to run faster, jump higher and look at the earth from the moon? These thoughts gave shudders to Poltu. There is no air on the moon, so one has to talk through ether waves. Both of them will have phones attached to their ears, so they won't have any problem. The rooms of the hotels, however, have air packed tightly. Morning and evening, the air is purified as well. Some unusual potted plants are placed inside the rooms, so one gets purified air always. Poltu has inquired with the tourism department that there are three categories of the hotels, 5-star, 7-star and 17-star. Poltu booked a room in a 5-star hotel. When Poltu and Strabuni will step on the moon, the hotel staff will rush with garlands towards them to welcome them grandly into the hotel. But first of all, he'll have to go to Strabuni's house. Along with her, he will have to go to the visa office. As Poltu rang the calling bell of Srabuni's house, someone pushed him from behind. Poltu jumped out of bed. Till now he was dreaming. His mother was standing before him. Poltu pretended to be angry upon his mother. Mother, you spoil my beautiful dream. I was having a nice time planning honeymoon on the moon after marrying Srabuni in a world hundred years from now. My Trip to Lataguri, a Supernatural Story I have been to Lataguri many times. From Jatra Prasada, Chapramari, I have seen rhinos, elephants, bisons, but from a good distance. I haven't had much of an adventure. I decided to go to the Lataguri forest in the dead of night. I expressed my desire to my guide, Mr. Torufdar. Torufdar replied, Look, a forest is very risky at dead of night. During daytime, a forest looks something, but at night, a forest looks something different, scary. I said I want to see the scary appearance of the forest. There is only one life to live. He said, All right, in that case, you come on the next full moon, but vehicles would not go into the forest at night. You will have to move on foot. I replied, I am game. 
Next full moon, I reached Lataguri with a sense of adventure whirling in my mind. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. I had put up at the Lataguri Resort, room number 209. At 11 in the night, I heard the calling bell ringing. I opened the door. I saw a girl of 18 or 19. She had a dusky complexion. I asked her, Who are you? She replied, I am Nilima, daughter of Mr. Tadaftar. Today he is caught up with an urgent piece of work, so I will guide you in the forest. I became annoyed and said, You are a small girl. You will guide me in the forest. I called up Mr. Tadaftar, but he was out of reach. Nilima said, Brother, you don't worry. I know the way inside the forest very well. You won't have any problem. I thought for a while and replied, All right, let's go. Both of us set off for the forest. I cannot express in words the beauty of the forest at night time. I saw a herd of bisons, a herd of elephants, and quite a few rhinos sleeping. Nilima said, no other guide will bring you to this part of the forest. Everyone is scared of this part. I replied, Yes, I have never come to this part. Nilima said, Brother, please walk carefully. There are many poisonous snakes in this forest. One bite and you are gone. I said, Is that so? Nilima, are you not scared here? She replied, I have nothing more to lose. Now this forest is everything that I have. I couldn't quite follow the puzzle in Nilima's words. The forest on the right appeared to be more scary. I said, Let's go to that side. Nilima replied, Brother, do not go to that side. There is a rough elephant on that side. Whenever it sees any human being, it comes charging. The whole night, both of us savored the beauty of the forest. It was daybreak. The sun came up. Nilima said, Brother, now I'll have to go. Nilima led me up to the main road and then... Without saying anything, she started walking in the opposite direction. I called out at her, but she did not respond. A weird girl. I have returned to Lataguri Resort, feeling very exhausted. I had fallen asleep. Suddenly, the calling bell rang. It was 11 o'clock then. I opened the door. Mr. Tarovdar came inside. He said, Mr. Odhikari, I'm extremely sorry. I couldn't come last night. Actually, my son had fallen very ill last night, so I had to hospitalize him. I replied, I didn't have any problem. Your daughter Nilima had guided me inside the forest very well. He suddenly lost his temper and said, Are you making fun of me? Don't you know that my daughter has died seven years ago from snake bite? Then she was only 19. I wanted to say something, but I was speechless. I fell unconscious. Adventure of Camellia, a science fiction. Camellia, my name is Camellia. Today is a special day of my life. A spaceship from NASA will leave for outside of solar system a little later. I have got an opportunity as an Indian woman. Today is the most thrilling day of my life. But my parents are not alive. Had they been alive, they would have been very happy today. Modern science considers that after death, the existence of human doesn't end. Their vitality enters into a huge black darkness. If they can see me from there, then certainly their chests will swell up with pride. My co-passenger, 
Robert Malcolm is a tasty clone. It is about time both of us are completely ready. A while later we will leave. At one point of time I had very good friendship with Robert. Then I used to like him, but now there is no more friendship between us. Both of us are now sitting inside that spaceship in the depth of unknown space. We have come a long distance from that blue planet. Mr. Malcolm is sitting right beside me, but isn't looking at me. Perhaps he is very busy with his own work. I took a glance at him. Can he feel true love? Perhaps not. Once I had promised, I will never look at him. But why isn't he looking at me at all? I myself cannot understand the complex chemistry of my mind. But I will also not give him any importance. To keep myself busy, I started watching the B computer screen attentively. Just then I got a jolt and my eyes became blurred. This spaceship is following a wrong path of the solar system and by following this path, we will never be able to return to the Earth. I screamed, Robert, I think we are following a wrong path. Robert replied, Yes, I can also understand. Definitely, there was some mistake in the programming. I was cross. And you are sitting just like that? Robert said firmly. No, I I'm trying. I'm trying my level best. I said in disbelief. I think you are not trying properly. You move aside, I will try. Robert said coldly. Alright. You try. I'd rather check on that side. The next two hours that passed was the best experience, the best adventure of our lives. It was a battle for survival, the last efforts. I'm trying to make contact with the earth somehow and if that happens, then certainly some way out will be found. And he was trying to somehow control this spaceship and return it back to the earth. But both of us failed. No effort is becoming successful. Won't it really be possible to bring back this spaceship to the earth? What will be our future? Who will come here to inquire after us? Shall we be finished? Then we saw. As if a comet is moving towards us with great speed, I shouted at Robert to warn him. Robert said, Yes, I'm trying. However, the disappointment on his face was saying something else. How long can we survive like this? Both of us kept trying. Suddenly we saw something like a ball of fire crash upon us. There was a blinding flash. I have no idea where both of us were thrown apart. I was having difficulty to open my eyes. As if the eyelids were stuck to each other. Very slowly I opened my eyes. I saw that I was lying in a small room. As far as I could understand, the room was made up of something similar to white cork. Various instruments were scattered all around. There wasn't much furniture in the room. I was lying on a soft downy bed as if a big storm had blown over me. A sound can be heard. It seems several people are approaching with long strides. I was amused to see them. They were some creature resembling cockroaches, but at least six feet tall. What was most surprising was that they could walk like human and when required could fly around with on wings as well. Certainly they are creatures from another planet. They surrounded me and stared at me. It seems that they are happy to find me alive. That means they won't harm me. I was feeling very cold. I didn't have a thread of clothing on me. I shouted, Give me a dress, I am feeling very cold. I couldn't understand whether they understood me. Maybe they couldn't, but all of them leaned towards me, 
Perhaps my language is strange to them. What I am saying is not at all important to them. What is making them surprised is that I can speak. Maybe they had thought that I was dumb. I shouted it again. Give me a dress. I am feeling very cold. I saw one of them run off and bring an object resembling a biscuit. The rest of them started removing all the tubes and pipes attached to my body. They appeared to be talking among themselves of which I couldn't make any heed or tell. What should I do? I can't think of anything. How do I make them understand? Now, one of them moved towards me and in such a manner that I got scared. He parted aside my long brown hair, touched that object resembling a biscuit on my forehead and it went inside. I felt a sudden jog like an electric shock. But since then, surprisingly, we could understand each other's language. We haven't been able to think of such an instrument yet. Definitely they are much more developed in knowledge and science than us. Now I say it softly, give me a dress, I am feeling very cold. One of them ran off and brought me a dress. It was a long white dress like a bed sheet. It was very thin. Later of course, I had come to know that they don't wear any clothes to cover their modesty. They use such clothes only during wartime, just like we use bulletproof jackets. One of them said, There is no reason to be scared. You are fit now. We are from Security Council Force and here's a Dr. Gomes. Dr. Gomes was sitting right beside me. As I looked at him, he said, But you need rest. You have escaped a great danger. That I am alive is indeed very surprising to me. When I had closed my eyes, I had thought I won't feel my heart beat again. But where am I now? How did I come here at all? When I asked them, they fell silent. One said, That's a long story. We'll tell you later on. Now you sleep. Is Robert alive? I wanted to know, but nobody answered me. One by one they left. Dr. Gomes gave me an injection and said, Now you go to sleep. You need a lot of rest. Slowly my eyes closed. When I woke up, I found myself very lively. Dr. Gomes took me out of that cabin. Gradually I saw that the whole of the surroundings of where I was staying was floating in a space. How amazing! Dr. Gomes was very affable. Within a few minutes, friendship developed between us. I felt like laughing at his words and I did laugh out. I kept on laughing like a fool. Having his permission, I started looking through a binocular. It seemed a small town was floating in space. Very, very far away from this earth, there's a planet called Siphon. These square creatures have come from that planet. We think that in this universe there is existence of life only in our planet and nowhere else. But these creatures don't think so because they know that this universe is very very big. There are several thousands of places which have existence of life. However, they have not been able to reach all the places like our earth. They thought that there's only darkness on this side of the universe, so it was not possible for life to exist. Recently, their cameras have captured some places around the star, Sonoka, which have atmosphere, so there could be existence of life. I missed mentioning that the star we know as the sun is Sonoka to them. When they are traveling very close to the star, Sonoka, they had a collision with us. That means what we thought to be a comet was actually a big spaceship of theirs, which can also be called a space town. 
I thanked Dr. Gons for this new life. Such a big doctor of a different planet is socializing with me so easily. But what about Robert? I asked. Gons said that they haven't found anyone else. I felt Gons was lying to me. But why? Maybe strict instructions from senior or maybe they really haven't found Robert. Poor soul. What would his situation be? I was yearning for Robert. After all, he was my co-passenger. They have, however, taken me to be a creature from the planet. Alex, repeatedly I was trying to convince them that I was not. Beside that star Sonoka, there's a blue planet Earth. I have come from there. They have examined all the organs and limbs of my body. They have found much similarity with the creatures of Alex. While we can utilize only a few percentage of our brain, they can utilize nearly the whole of their brain. The creatures of Alex was the most developed among the other creatures of the surrounding planets. So they wanted the others to surrender to their supremacy. Sometimes the creatures of the surrounding planets came together and revolted against the creatures of Alex. As a punishment, all their power used to be taken away and they were dumped in a very far off planet so that they cannot return. Apart from the creatures of Alex, no one knew about that planet. Only it was known that the planet was blue and that there are some creatures who cannot talk or walk. They just stand still at one place. I started figuring things out. That means the green earth of ours is actually a prison. Plants are the original inhabitants of this planet and all the creatures have come from different planets. From the creatures of different planets, this huge animal world have evolved. Some creatures of Alex also revolted sometimes and as a punishment, they too were dumped on the earth. They are our predecessors. The destruction of the creatures of Alex is very unusual. Two thousand years ago, they were completely destroyed. Those of us who are ordinary consider the universe to be infinite. But the universe also has a limit. So what is beyond it? Yes, beyond it is another universe, one after another, revolving parallelly. The difference in time between two adjacent universes is 1000 Earth years. I have already said, the creatures of Alex were very developed and having been empowered by the power of science. They wanted to go from one universe to another. A big energy is controlling the activities of each universe. They went against that big energy. As I listened to Gomes, I thought, at some point of time, we will also develop like the creatures of Alex. Then, shall we make the same mystic and become extinct? I talked with Gomes for a long time. There is no night and day here. It was a little weird. Gomes took me to the cabin and put the bulb on. A little later, food was served to me. It appeared to be something like noodles. I put it in my mouth and found that it was something different. It was tasty. I think it's some meat. Gomes said, This type of food is very popular here. There's a pond in the spaceship where these are cultivated. Gomes left. Before leaving, he said, If needed, do call me. I'll be in the adjacent room. After Gomes left, I stayed awake for a long time. Slowly, my eyes closed. I woke up and saw Gomes calling me. Perhaps he had woken me up. 
I saw some creatures with the long legs coming towards me. I am standing in a big hall and wearing a white Danaphanus dress. Surrounding me were many strange creatures. All the commotion is because of me. Everyone wants to touch me. No heroine of Hollywood perhaps have this much popularity but I couldn't think of myself as anything more than an animal of the zoo. Couple of hours passed this way before I was taken back. Now Gomes is sitting by me. There is no one else. Maybe he can understand my feelings, my agony. Suddenly Gomes said excitedly, Camellia, I have great news for you. I didn't show enthusiasm. Yes, tell me. Dr. Gomes said, I had lied to you. We had found your companion. He was trying to escape, so we have imprisoned him. I couldn't believe. I asked, what did you say? Really? Can you take me to him? Gomes thought for a while and said, All right, come. Gomes led me to him but didn't stay himself. Before leaving, he told me such a thing that I cannot trust my ears. Gomes said, Go, meet your friend. Now I will take leave and if possible, flee from here. I moved closer to Robert. He too was wearing a similar white dress. I untied his hands and told him smilingly, You are still alive. He replied, Why? Would you have been happy had I died? I said, I wouldn't have been unhappy either. You too had tried to escape alone, leaving me behind. He said, I didn't think you were alive. Nevertheless, now both of us must flee. I said, Just by saying about fleeing, can we flee? How do we flee? He said, I have made those arrangements. There are several small vehicles here. Driving those is very easy. I'll manage. If we can get out once from here, thereafter, we will see. I said, but if they attack us? He said, yes, I'm going to the armory. We need some weapons with us. You go and sit in the vehicle. I said, no, not you. Getting the weapons is my responsibility. Now you go to the vehicle. Without a demur, he said, All right, you go. Now I am inside the armory. It has numerous types of weapons. My eyes started to roll on seeing those. I picked up as much as I could. When I looked up, I saw many strange creatures had encircled us. Then I could do nothing else. I hosted up two rifles in both hands and started showering bullets aimlessly. Quite a few of them fell down here and there. They also fired back at me, but those bullets did not strike me because I was wearing that bulletproof shit. Slowly I moved ahead. Right then a ray of black sunlight fell upon me. I couldn't see anything. It was hazy all around, shadowy. A black ray as Eve was draining away all my power. One by one, all of them went away. Now it was darkness all around. There is Robert approaching towards me through the darkness. But will he able to save me? Perhaps not. Robert came in front of me and said, You have saved my life. But you have entangled in such a trap that there is no way to get out of it. A few words escaped from my mouth inaudibly. No way out. Perhaps he has heard it. He thought for a while and said, There is one way. Immediately jumped into that black sunlight. He stood covering me and said, Camellia, you quickly escape. 
quickly till now the invisible power that was pulling me ceased i was about to go out when i stopped on my tracks i asked him but you how will you come out his voice trembled no i will not be able to come out any more but you go my eyes were getting moist i said if we have to die then we must die together by fleeing in this manner i cannot save myself robert held my hand and said no you will have to go if you remain alive i will remain alive within you forever a few drops of tear rolled down my eyes i could not resist myself any further i pressed my lips against his very strongly his body was swaying my body also didn't seem to have anything for some time we forgot where both of us were both of us were getting lost two of us became one maybe we were alive for this sweet union with one sudden jerk i was abruptly thrown out of that sphere of black sunlight hazy shadowy i could see his body gradually diminishing he is disappearing in the distance slowly he is transforming into a point maybe it's an illusion of my eyes i cannot think of anything else anymore i cannot even stand up let alone searching for a way out only the picture of robert is flashing before my eyes at one point of time that too faded away my eyes are closing perhaps this is the last vision maybe i will never be able to wake up again from this slumber when i opened my eyes i saw i was sitting inside a taxi and the taxi was going through space with a great speed the taxi driver appeared to be very familiar i shouted you who are you the taxi driver smiled and said can't you recognize me i'm gomes your friend there's no more reason to worry now we have come away a long distance i wanted to know but what happened to robert gomes replied i'm sorry i couldn't save him i suppose they will not kill him i thought to myself even if they do not kill him maybe they will keep him in some museum or conduct scientific research by operating on his body now gomes asked about what are you thinking so much i can understand you are feeling a lot of pain i stayed in myself and asked but where are we going now a smile crossed his lips to the earth i have a lot of interest about that blue planet of yours you show me the way we'll start a new life there an eternal love story there was a small town and there was a boy who loved a girl very much the girl was a muslim and the boy was a hindu the boy repeatedly expressed his love but the girl rejected because this world the society would not understand this love both of them had no other option riot had struck that time although there was no good reason for the riot between hindus and muslims it just started it was blood all over one day the boy found that girl in a dark alley she was smeared with blood the boy picked her up and took her to the hospital the doctor in the hospital was a friend of this boy so there was no dearth of treatment the girl however needed a lot of blood the boy got his blood group tested and donated blood to the girl while donating blood the boy experienced an unusual feeling more than the pleasure of coitus he felt a satisfaction which was impossible to describe in words when the girl regained consciousness she saw the boy her eyes swelled up with tears 
The boy wiped her tears and said, Every drop of tear rolling down your eyes is more precious than a drop of blood dripping from my heart. Later, the boy was returning home along a dark alley when a gang of Muslims caught him and took him to a graveyard. The boy asked, Why are you killing me? One Muslim answered, A boy from your area has made this graveyard unholy, so we are taking revenge. The boy died, but the story did not end. After dying, the boy went straight up and he found Ishwar and Allah were the same. He was crying alone. The boy stepped forward and asked, O Ishwar, O Allah, how can you sit silently? Your children are fighting against each other and you are doing nothing. You are silent. You are still silent. Ishwar, Allah was crying. Then the boy went to his girlfriend. He tried to touch her but could not do so. He said, Today I am not there but still I am there. I am alive in the blood flowing through your heart. Whatever happens, no one can separate that blood from you. Morale of the story That God is one, the soul of the universe. We can call him Ishwar, Allah or God. But we should not fight against each other in the name of God. He is one, the supreme energy of the universe. A different kind of love story. First meeting. Will you marry me? No. Do you love me? No. What's your name? I haven't known it yet. Will you tell me your name? Crazy boy. Second meeting. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes. Do you have only one boyfriend? Yes. What do you think? Only one boyfriend is sufficient to love you? Yes. Even if it is not sufficient, I don't need any help of yours. Third meeting. Do you know I like adventure very much? How should I know? What kind of adventure do you like? Mountaineering, bungee jumping, etc, etc. Good. By telling me all this, you are having a feel of adventure. I can understand. Yes, I like adventure very much. Sorry, but I don't like it at all. Both of our types are different. There is no similarity. I don't know how much shall I have to toil for this girl. Fourth meeting. Do you know actually what kind of girl I like? No, I don't. Tell me. Look at yourself in the mirror. She will understand. I like girls exactly like you. Mm, in the mirror, only the body can be seen. Nothing else. What kind of girls do you like? Can you tell me that? Is the body everything? Fifth meeting. Do you want to ask me anything? Yes. Do you have a girlfriend? No, none at all. In that case, I am unable to like you. I like experienced boys more. Can you ask me the question again? I could not hear it properly. Do you have a girlfriend? I have lots and lots of girlfriends. Sorry, I want a fresh candidate to marry. I wanted to know the truth, so I lied in the beginning. It is really impossible to understand this mind of women. The mind of women is more mysterious than space. Sixth meeting. I love you very much. Can't you really understand that? How much do you love me? As much as a number of stars in the sky. I like you very much. I like you much more than the full moon. I am madly in love with you. I know. You are crazy even before falling in love with me. Your mental condition is not right. That is why I avoid you. I am scared to love you. Seventh meeting. Why don't you want to love me? 
I have already come to know that you don't have any boyfriend. You have lied to me. Actually, the fear is not about believing in the word love. Love is actually a hormonal activity. My father and mother had a love marriage, but their marriage did not become stable. So I am scared to love anyone. Eighth meeting. You love me just once and check for yourself. I'll never cheat you. How can I trust a boy like you? Now before our marriage, you are telling me that I'm very beautiful. You love me very much. You are comparing me with the deer, although I know that this is not entirely true. But after marriage, this very you will tell me that why did I marry this baby elephant? Had I known that after marriage she will become so fat, I would not have even married her. Then these words would hurt my expectations. You can trust me. I'll never say such things. Okay. In that case, I'm ready to marry you. I do trust you. But after marriage, if there is any issue, then I will not spare you. Ninth meeting. One day prior to the marriage. Today I'm very happy. You are ready to marry me. Today is the happiest day of my life. Will you kiss me today? In exchange, you take UP and Bihar. You keep your UP and Bihar with you. You just give me a good gift. Okay, dear. I'll give you such a gift that you will remember the whole of your life. Tenth meeting. After marriage, just before a first night. Today, I want to give you a very expensive gift. What gift? Gold jewelry. Much more expensive. Then is it diamond jewelry? No, more expensive than that. I can't understand. What do I say? Some poems written by me. I have written these poems only for you. What kind of crazy person did I get married to? I don't know what's in my fate. Rape, a minor incident. Rohini was involved in student politics and wanted me to join it as well. She always wanted to do something for this country and this society. She was an idle woman of Mother India. But some hooligans kidnapped her and gang raped her. They kept her in a brutalist condition for seven days in a dark room. After seven days, when she left that room, she had gone mad. In Indian Hindu mythology, a woman is sometimes worshipped as an incarnation of strength and sometimes as an incarnation of nature. Govind himself had come to rescue Draupadi. But who will come in this age of Kali Yuga? What has happened to our country? Rape like these are happening every day. Has the youth of India forgotten how to respect women? A few antisocial men and hooligans are raping the women of the country in broad daylight and there is no one to stop them. What happened to the law of this country? These hooligans are not only disrespecting the women of the country but also Mother India herself. We cannot keep quiet now. We have to protest against them. We have only one request to make to all political party leaders, police and administration that they formulate a strict law against rape and implement it too. The Day of the Holocaust the day of the Holocaust would be the last day of human civilization. All of this has been predecided in the wheel of time. 
The creation is very unhappy, which is why Lord Vishnu, Brahma, the creator, and all the other gods and goddesses came to meet the Lord of the Lords, Mahadev, on Koilash Mountain. Lord Vishnu requested the Mahadev, O Lord of the Lords, Mahadev, we all want the day of the Holocaust to be delayed by a thousand years. The Mahadev replied, But why, Narayan? You already know that in the wheel of time, the day of the Holocaust has already been fixed. Narayan requested once again, O Mahadev, we also know that you are the destructor of this universe. If you want, you can delay the day of the Holocaust by 1000 years. This is why we all have come to your refuge. Mahadev replied, In your last three incarnations as Ram, Krishna and Buddha Dev, you have tried to show the world a new direction, but today the species of humans have forgotten everything. Brothers are fighting each other. There is no respect towards the elders. After the invention of a device named computer, the human species is considering itself parallel to God. God has become just a source of entertainment. No one has devotion. Everyone keeps demanding something or the other from God. But no one wants to work accordingly. Someone wants money, while someone else wants power or position. The humans have forgotten how to find happiness in the small things of life. A terrible Kali Yuga has arrived. The human species, for its own selfishness, is destroying that very nature in whose womb they have evolved. Hence, we want to destroy this creation completely and once again, we three devs will create a new world. Narayan replied after careful evaluation, Mahadev, you speak truly, but I, Vishnu, the guardian of the universe, want to offer another chance to the human species. In my Dashavatar, I will reinstate dharma by redestroying adharma. This time, we will cause such an untoward incident that human species will definitely get a new direction. Hence, I request you to delay the day of the Holocaust by a thousand years. Mahadev addressed the Brahmadev this time. Hey Brahmadev, you are the creator of this universe. What do you want? Brahmadev replied, Yes, Mahadev, I have created this universe and the human species. But today, it is no more under our control and we are embarrassed about it. But even then, we want you to give the human species another chance. Mahadev replied after contemplating something, Okay, Narayan, if you want, then I will definitely give the human species another chance. But if these humans keep destroying nature like this for their own selfishness, then nothing can be done. Vishnu replied, Do not worry, Mahadev. We all will definitely pay attention to this issue. Everyone thanked the Mahadev tons, and this was how the day of the Holocaust was delayed by 1000 years. Say, Har Har Mahadev! In search of a new world. Thousand years later, there is no existence of the world. It's completely destroyed. Humans are responsible for that. Some humans have taken shelter in space. The last generation of human species is living in 108 space ships. They are searching for one such world which shall be suitable for human life. With assistance of wormhole technology, eventually Michael and Shayuni reached another dimension. They come face to face with another world. Several thousand light years away from our world is situated that planet named Alex. The creatures of Alex resemble humans, but they are much more intelligent and powerful. The most amazing fact is that the average lifespan of the creatures of Alex is about 1 lakh years. Their science and technology is much more developed. 
The creatures of Alex bathe thrice a day and have food only once. For us to be alive, we need food, water and oxygen. But they can survive for several thousand years without these. One group of the creatures of Alex live in the sea. The name of their king is William. Another group resides on land and mountains. Their king is called Leo. Another group lives in the sky. Their king is Albert. Three kings, William, Leo and Albert control the planet Alex. Michael and Shiony go to meet King William first. The palace of William is upon the sea. It's built with diamond, pearl and gems. William is very handsome. He is in a state of slumber on a huge serpent. Right beside him is sitting an exquisitely beautiful woman. She is William's wife, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is very happy and she asks Shiony and Michael to sit down. William opens his eyes and wants to know, Where have you come from? Shiny replies, We have come from another dimension. Our planet Earth has been destroyed. Kindly help us. William smiles and says, With the assistance of wormhole technology, you have come from your dimension to our dimension. You have spent one day in our dimension. In our dimension, one day means 1,000 years of your dimension. So there is nobody alive in your dimension. Michael becomes worried and says, So what should we do now? Mona Lisa replies, You do one thing. Go to my father, King Leo. He will certainly show you the right direction. Michael and Shiony set off to meet King Leo. The palace of King Leo stands on the top of the hill, covered with snow. King Leo, his wife Jennifer, his sons Robert and Charles listen to their stories very attentively. Leo replies, You must have heard of Albert. He is my son-in-law. He has married my daughter, Angolina. I will tell Angolina and Albert to go to your dimension and construct your earth newly. Then you will be able to start living there anew. Thereafter, Michael and Shiony set off to meet Angolina and Albert. The palace of Albert is in the sky, in a floating state. Albert and Angolina listen to their stories and according to instructions of Leo, agree to help them. With the assistance of wormhole technology, Albert, Michael and Shiony come back to our dimension. Albert constructs the earth newly. Michael and Shiny starts living on that earth. Albert stays on this earth for some days with Michael and Shiny and returns to his own dimension. Michael and Shiny rename themselves Adam and Eve. Old Age Home A bachelor son's parents do not need to go to an old age home. Then what happens after marriage? That a son is compelled to send his parents to the old age home? Deepu has asked this question to many people. Why do the mentalities of the sons belonging to the elite educated society undergo such a change? Deepu was born in a small village, full of greenery. He grew up and his personality also developed amidst these natural surroundings, where the amenities of modern civilization were absent. There was no electricity. There were muddy roads. Very few houses were made of bricks. However, there was humanity among people. They were not selfish. 
in Deepu's house, his parents and others had great respect for his grandmother. She also loved them very much. He did not have any idea about the concept of the old age home. He first saw the old age home after coming to Kolkata. What an attitude of the people belonging to the educated society. He had always regarded his parents and teachers as God, which is why he was very upset to find the kind of treatment given to the parents in the cities. He raises his protests many times. He tries to explain and convince others, but nobody listened to him. The parents bring up their children with so much care, sacrifice and pain. Then how can one think of sending the aged parents to the old age home? Deepu belongs to the village. He is unable to understand the reason. Seeing no other option, he was compelled to start an old age home himself. He is extremely concerned about orphan children. So he started an orphanage along with the old age home. In this way, the life of a great man began. Shobuzda and Lockdown I know Shobuzda for a long time. He is a very nice person. Regularly feeds the cats and dogs of the locality and takes them to the veterinary doctors when they are sick. He is famous locally as an animal lover. Whenever I see him, I remember my grandmother. That's a different story. I will tell it later. Now, there is lockdown going on, a period of deep crisis. The whole world is badly affected by the corona pandemic. People are confined inside their homes and materialistic people like us are facing a lot of problems. But Shobuzda? Shobuzda is doing fine. He is still regularly cooking food for the local cats and dogs and feeding them. Loving, caring and helping these helpless animals gives a different kind of happiness which no material things can give. We all want pleasure and happiness but no material possession can give us real happiness. The source of real happiness is not in the outside world of materials. It is within ourselves that can be achieved by loving and helping the helpless. Real love gives the human mind immense happiness. One who achieves that happiness does not have any pain of deprivation. He can easily help someone. He does not have selfishness in him. By helping the helpless, his real happiness grows many times. Sulagna and her sacrifice Just now I received the news that Prashanta sir is no more. He was being treated in some reputed hospital in Mumbai. Sulagna was with Prashant sir till his last breath. Sulagna was my classmate. She always came first in class and I came second. She was also quite beautiful. Both of us and some of our friends used to attend tuition classes for English from Prashant sir. He was also a very good person. He used to like Shulagna. Sulagna too liked him. Everything was going fine. Their marriage also got fixed. Then it became known that Prashanta sir has blood cancer. Everyone tried to convince Sulagna to discard the idea of marrying Prashanta sir. 
because there was no certainty of his life. But Sulagna didn't listen to anyone's advice and married him because she felt that in this hour of crisis she must stay by him. Sulagna never left him and always took care of him. This way, for the last 10 years, she has been serving her love. Whenever I think of noble girls like Sulagna in this selfish world, her character becomes brighter in our eyes. One death and one affair. The incident happened right in front of my eyes. It happened so fast, I couldn't do anything. A lorry came from behind and knocked the boy down. The boy fell flat on his face with limbs sprawled. A few of us carried the blood-smeared boy to the hospital. The doctor said that he had no chance of survival. As he lay in the cabin of the hospital, he looked at me and said that he wanted to meet a girl. So unwillingly, I had to call her. I called the girl and told her everything. The girl clearly replied, No, I don't love him now. I was surprised. In anger, I told her, Look, whether you love him or not is not important now. Before dying, he wants to meet you once. So, you should come. The girl said, Had it been some other day, I would have thought, Today there is college annual function. Today it's not possible for me to go. The girl disconnected the call. Proving wrong the many synonyms of the word woman. Like affection, concern, pity, love, fondness. The girl didn't come to meet the boy. The boy died at nine in the night. The girl at that time was shaking her hips with some other boy in the college annual function. Incarnation of Lord Brahma The Untold Story of Hindu Mythology 16th February 3102 BC This day was important for this world because on this day Kaliyug has started on this world. At the end of Dwaparud Yug, Lord Vishnu had taken the incarnation form of Lord Krishna. After Lord Krishna left behind his human form, Kaliyug started on this world. Brahma, Vishnu and Mahadev are the three lords, three Dev. The incarnation form of Vishnu had become so famous that Brahma and Mahadev also wanted to take incarnation forms on this world. 16th February 3102 BC On Mount Kailash, meeting of Tridev is going on. Lord Vishnu is trying to explain. Lord Brahma, you are the creator. You have created this world. What is the need for you to take incarnation form? This is my department. Lord Brahma told Lord of the Lords Mahadev and Lord Vishnu. But I also want to take the incarnation form of human in this world. Lord Vishnu said, But if we, three devs, start taking excessive incarnation forms in this world, then the humans will get confused. Then maybe they will start fighting among themselves. Lord of the Lords Mahadev said, If Lord Brahma wants to take incarnation form, then we should support him. You are the protector of this world. If you want, some solution must come out. Lord Vishnu replied, All right, you take the incarnation form, but there is a condition. You will not take the incarnation form in Aryabharth. You will do so in Mesopotamia. This incarnation form of yours will create three religions and bring a lot of changes in this world. Lord Brahma took the incarnation form in this world in 2000 BC. The name of this incarnation is Abraham. Oh, 
फोलो मी ड्यूरिंग दुर्गा पूजा कोलकाता अडॉन्ट इट्स लाइक अ न्यूली वेडेड ब्राइड ह्यूज पंडाल्स ह्यूज आइडल्स ब्राइटनेस ऑन ऑल द साइड्स थाउजेंड्स ऑफ प्रिंस एंड प्रिंसेस वेर ट्रेंडिंग ड्रेसेस एंड गो पैंडल हॉपिंग बट वॉट कैन वेरिंग क्लीन एंड न्यू ड्रेसेस डू वेन नो वन इज सीरियस अबाउट द प्योरिटी ऑफ देयर हार्ट Everyone worships the mother goddess for the fulfillment of their own desires. They have less dedication and more pretense. But there is no brightness in Polomi's life. She is newly married, but on the eve of Durga Puja, her husband Vishal is not there with her. Vishal works in the army. A war is being fought on the border. Bishal is fighting amidst a life and death situation. Polomi is not much acquainted with politics, diplomacy and war. Only for the life of a husband, she is praying to the mother goddess in her heart. There is no pretense in her devotion. Today on the eve of Durga Puja, I raise a question. Hey mother goddess where are you are you in the tall pandals and tall idols the brightens scattered around and with the prince and princess or with polomi this helpless woman in the dire need of your grace where are you mother goddess Mohananda Express and a Wishful Snake Often some unbelievable incidents occur in life which the mind fails to accept I won't be able to forget that day ever At that time I was working in Agra I had taken the Mohananda Express from Kishanganj to go to Agra The train was late by 12 hours I boarded the train and found it to be completely vacant On the seat opposite mine was seated a pretty girl. She appeared to be 18 or 19 years old. From her looks, she seemed to be a Nepali. Probably she has come from Darjeeling. I did not care much about her. I don't know what she would think. So I started reading the book on palmistry that I had with me. I noticed that the girl was frequently glancing at me from the corner of her eyes taking me by surprise suddenly she came and sat beside me she looked at me for some time and then she said excuse me i have a request will you please read my palm i replied yes of course i touched her hand it was cold like ice I couldn't find enough lines on her palm only 3 or 4 I said the lines of your palm hasn't yet formed properly Meanwhile a few drunk ruffians were going past us They saw us and asked what's going on here I replied nothing I'm reading her palm Two well-built muscular ruffians sat on either side of me One of them said Kam read our palms another two ruffians sat on either side of that girl i understood that the girl was feeling very uncomfortable one of the ruffians grasped one hand of the girl and the other told her hey give me your mobile number those men were trying to molest the girl in various ways the train was completely vacant I was not a hero of Bollywood films that I would be able to rescue the girl from those four stocky ruffians. Still, I tried to save that unfamiliar girl. Suddenly, the girl said, "I want to go to the toilet." One of the ruffians said, "Come on, I will also go to the toilet with you." The eyes of the girl were blazing in rage. The girl with one thick set ruffian following her walked towards the toilet. My heart was trembling with the anticipation of what was to follow. Suddenly there was a loud savage cry. 
all of us rushed in that direction. The ruffian was howling, Save me! The girl is a snake! She has bitten me on my hand. She has jumped out of the moving train. Save me! None of us could believe his words. Can such a thing happen? However, within a short while, the ruffian died from the action of snake venom. Police came and interrogated me. I told them, I do not know that girl. We became acquainted on the train. Thereafter, whenever I board the Mahananda Express, I wonder if I would ever chance upon that wishful snake again. Neil and the Strange Animal First, Neil My name is Neil. Four friends have set off for an unusual expedition. What will be the result? We don't know. Shall we really be able to return alive? I think the guarantee of not returning is 100%. We are setting off for an isolated island in the Pacific Ocean. That island is so dangerous that I am unable to describe. At every step, danger awaits us. Still, we have set off. But what is the purpose of our expedition? On that isolated island, in the Pacific Ocean, a strange type of animal has been seen. It is estimated to be about 20 feet in length. The scientific world is very worried about that strange animal. If we can capture and bring that animal, then a lot of mysteries would be solved. But our purpose is not to solve mysteries. If we can capture that animal alive, then we will get quite a lot of money. This is a kind of agreement we have had. However, we will have to do this job in extreme secrecy. The media must not get to know. Second, a lot of incidents have happened since then. The job is even more difficult than we had thought. While trying to capture that strange animal, three of my friends have lost their lives and I had fallen into a ditch of ice-cold water while fleeing. I would have died had not a beautiful girl pulled me out of that ditch of ice-cold water. For a few seconds my eyes had opened, then again my eyes closed. I could only feel the touch of the body of a beautiful girl. Thereafter, I remember nothing. Third, when I regained consciousness, I found I was lying inside a tent. A little later, that beautiful girl came in. This beautiful girl has saved my life. But how did she come here? She doesn't seem to be an inhabitant of this forest. It doesn't seem that any human being can survive in this isolated island. It is actually something supernatural. But why did she save my life? What does she want in return of my life? I can't understand. I kept staring at her. She asked me, what are you looking at? I replied, you, you have saved my life. She said, You were drowning in ice-cold water. I pulled you out, but your body had become completely numb from the cold. So to warm you up, I have had a little and changed your clothes as well. I looked at myself. So, within one night, I lost all of myself. Women usually wear the dress at night that I am wearing now. I must be looking pretty awkward. The girl moved towards me and said, Are you all right now? I said, Yes. But I cannot understand why you saved my life. The girl broke into a laughter and said, I felt like doing so. 
that everything must have a reason behind it is not obvious. Like, is there a reason why this earth has been created? Leave this nonsense talk aside. You must be very hungry now. I will bring something for you. Wait a while. I said, no, I'm not hungry. I have many things to discuss with you. I think that is more important. In a tone of rebuke, she said, Discussions we can have later. There's a lot of time for talking. First, I must feed you something. I'll be back in two minutes. It took her a little more than two minutes when she returned with some Chinese food for me. Both of us shared from the same plate, gossiping all the while, and I came to know a lot of things. I asked her, How did you come here? She answered, I had come here on a vacation. I said, You came here for a vacation? Does anyone come here vacationing at all? She said, Why do you consider others to be like yourself? There are many who love solitude more than commotion. Though I admit that the number is very few. I said, You must be one of them. She said, Did I say that? My boyfriend Ronaldo, his first love was this isolated island. We frequently came here on vacation. I asked, Why are you saying was? Is he no more? She suddenly became unmindful and said, No, he is no more. You must have come here to capture that strange animal. The demon has killed him. I said, Yes, I can understand. To kill that, I mean, to take revenge, you are still here. She said, Yes, you are quite intelligent. I think you can help me. I said, but I don't want to kill that strange animal. I want to capture it and take along with me. She said, Perhaps you know nothing. So you are saying such things? She began narrating the story of that strange animal. It has come from a different planet. How far their planet is, we don't know. Perhaps their planet is getting destroyed for some reason so they want to live in some other planet. The strange animal is trying to contact with his planet. If it becomes successful, then the earth will be full of similar animals. In that case, what the condition of human beings will be can be well understood. The animal, however, cannot make contact with their planet because of the ozone layer. It cannot pierce the ozone layer and send message. Its spaceship has also broken down. As long as that strange animal is not annihilated, the possibility of immense danger for the Earth remains. Fourth, Rosie, the name of that girl is Rosie. Rosie shook me awake in the morning. Rosie was looking very pretty. I wouldn't, however, say that she looked animated. Her eyes were still lonely and apathetic. She told me, Will it help if you sleep for so long? You have forgotten that we have a lot of work to do. As much as I see Rosie, I seem to like her. Her behavior has charmed me. I don't know why I looked at her in a quaint manner. She smiled and said, You are not angry, I suppose. I was just pulling your leg. Please don't be angry. I was really not angry. Why should I be angry just like that and that too for such a trivial reason? Actually, my face is such that if I'm serious, it appears that I'm angry upon someone. And when I'm really angry, then no one understands that. This is my predicament. It is very late in the morning. 
Sleeping for so long wasn't proper of me. I hurried out of my bed. I said, No. Do I have the guts to be angry with you? It is for you that I am still alive today. Can I be angry with you? She said, See, you will not tell me such things repeatedly. I feel bad. Because I need you, I have saved you. I have not shown any mercy upon you. However, if you find me intolerable, you are free to leave. I said, Now you are getting serious, isn't it? Both of us burst into laughter. Fifth, Rosie has instructed me thoroughly. Now both of us have started out fully prepared. On the other side, what's that strange animal doing? Now, possibly it is desperately trying to establish contact with their planet. If it becomes successful, then what will be the condition of this earth? I shudder to even think of it. We have come close to its den. That is, its spaceship, which looks like a hut. We have decided that both of us would enter from both sides. I decided to enter from the front. Sixth. That strange animal has bitten off a big chunk of flesh from my hand. Rosie is showering bullets on it aimlessly. That animal, leaving me alone, is heading towards Rosie fiercely. Perhaps it will strangle Rosie right now. I cannot hold up the gun with my injured hand. I'm trying to hold it. I have to do it. There is nitric acid mixed inside the bullets. If the nitric acid can penetrate inside the brain of that strange animal, then it will suck on. I held my hand straight and pulled the trigger. Yes. The bullet came out and flew straight, straight on target. Seventh. I was feeling a bit uncomfortable. I have come and stood by the sea. Waves were lapping on the shore one after another. I have really become unmindful. I was thinking something irrelevant. When has Rosie come and stood close by me? I haven't noticed. Rosie rested her hand on my shoulder and asked, Are you feeling too bad? In amazement, I replied, No. Why would I feel bad? Rosie said, Your dream wasn't fulfilled. Your dream to earn a lot of money. Had you been able to capture that strange animal alive? You could have got a lot of money. I said, But how does that matter? I'm feeling happy at the thought that I could save the earth from an immense danger. Rosie smiled and said, You are telling me my words, isn't it? I said, Believe me, this is what I have in mind. Rosie said, You have changed a lot, Neil. I replied, Yes, I have changed, but you are responsible for that. Rosie asked, Am I responsible? Are you blaming me? I said, I am grateful to you. Rosie began laughing again, this time much louder, and then she said, If I say I have used you to fulfill my purpose, this is the truth. I replied, Yes, maybe that's true. But what you have given me in return will continue to inspire me for the whole of my life. Rosie did not pay much heed to my words. Perhaps she didn't believe me. Where the sea and the sky have merged, Rosie began walking in that direction. The sea is so vast that it seems to have merged with the sky. But does the sea really ever merge with the sky? Or it doesn't merge? This remains a mystery for the earth forever. A little later, this isolated island will become terribly beautiful. Darkness will descend. Then Rosie will look terribly beautiful. I really cannot understand Rosie. She is beyond my reach. However, 
Will this isolated island remember us? I think it will. Blind Love I knew Ananya since childhood. She was a bright student and in school, college, she didn't have any affair. She had good results, so she got a job. Everything was going fine. Suddenly, she fell in love with a boy. The name of the boy was Rahul. Nobody knew from where the boy had come or what he did because he was from another town. He was very handsome though. Ananya gave her heart to Rahul and in her mind she had accepted him as her husband. Everything was going fine. One day, it became known that Rahul hated a Naxalite organization. When Ananya came to know of this, she wanted to save her connections with Rahul, but she couldn't. Within a blink of an eye, all happiness from Ananya's life vanished. Then one day, the police came. Rahul was absconding, so the police caught hold of Ananya. Rahul was standing on the way with a gun in his hand. Then Ananya to absconded, not with Rahul, but with death. Winning the Throne Debu Babu has become victorious in the elections. Tomorrow he is going to take oath as a chief minister. A change has come after a change. The story of churning the Amrit that he had heard in his childhood from his grandmother is flashing in his mind very strongly. Taking Amrit ensures that disease, aging and death cannot touch anyone. The three lords, Tridev, decided that the gods will take Amrit and fearlessly concentrate on social well-being, but in fact, that did not happen. The Amrit for which the Lord of Lords, Mahadev, had to swallow poison was not put to good use. After drinking Amrit, the gods became arrogant. Power weakens character. As a result, condition of the creation became very miserable. As a consequence, a change became essential. Even in politics, similar change is essential because if there is power in anyone's hand for a long time, his character becomes weak. The gradual weakening of character of the gods resulted in the miserable condition of creation. Then the god were removed and the demons were enthroned. In the stories of the Puranas, there is mention of Mrit Sanjeevani Mantra, which is a form of yogic energy. That yogic energy could even bring back to life dead human beings. To maintain balance between the power of gods and demons, Ashuguru Shukracharya was given Mritsa Sanjivani Mantra. The gods then realized their mistake. Thereafter, to cleanse their character, they practiced self-mortification. After purification of their character, they were given back the throne of heaven. This is the rule of fate. If purification of character is made with a fire of repentance, then the weakness of character is driven away. So before taking oath, Deep Babu remembered his tutelary deity and prayed, Purify my character so that power cannot weaken my character. Bless me. With great power, there must also come great responsibility. Mutajani and the world after a hundred years. It is about the future world. 
the world after 100 years from now. With the passage of time and blend of favorable and adverse changes, a new world has evolved. Time passes, facing many kinds of hostilities and extreme conditions. And the science always keeps pace with the changing times. Then comes the time when it faces a situation which is beyond the imagination of mankind. A condition, hitherto unknown. Science is now much advanced. There is human habitation beneath the sea. Another human civilization has grown there. Space travel has now become as easy as an evening stroll. There is nothing to get astonished about. The solar system has come closer to human beings. Visiting the moon for honeymoon is not at all an alien concept. Utilizing every possible opportunity, human beings are spreading their sense of civilization wherever they can. The warmth of the earth has increased by quite a few degrees in these hundred years. The style of clothing has also changed to a great extent. Both men and women wear similar kinds of dresses. The whole body is covered with different kinds of designs, which is their latest fashion trend. They use various kinds of cosmetics to make their sharp eyes look more attractive. With the advancement of civilization, more and more machines are trying to engulf mankind. Man has become more and more dependent on the machines to satisfy their endless demands and urges. The international political scenario has also changed immensely. The monopolistic dominance of the USA has reduced. The whole world has been divided into different segments. For example, South Asia is one such segment and the most advanced city of this segment is Kolkata. The Kolkata after 100 years from now. The city of Kolkata has changed after 100 years. The sky rail is traveling through the different paths centered on Kolkata. When such a sky rail stopped in front of the College Street crossing, a girl dressed in body-hugging dress, somewhat like a yellow t-shirt and black jeans, attracted special attention among all the other passengers who got down there. Her hands and legs are long, the head is a little asymmetrical with the body, pointed ears and long hair, just like the waves of a brown sea with an extremely fair complexion. The girl is walking towards Calcutta University. There is no hesitation in her gesture or body language. It seems that these places are quite known to her. Many students are entering and leaving through the huge gate of the Calcutta University. The girl entered through the gate straight away. The gatekeeper is not a human being, but a mechanical robot. He moved his mechanical hand and smiled mildly at the girl. She gave a quick look at the robot. Her gesture proved that she is a regular visitor here and therefore everyone knows her. The camera is capturing some good-looking boys and girls and moving forward. There was laughter and a pleasant smell everywhere. A small research room of Calcutta University can be seen. The room is not fully dark, rather it is a blend of light and darkness. The backside of a boy can be seen at one corner of the room, sitting facing the computer. The boy is young, not older than 18. He has a deep vision and whispering from time to time. I will change everything. The girl is advancing towards the room with her long steps. With her mild knock at the door of the research room, some light spread in the room. In this light, the boy is visible. His hair is messy, with deep and attractive eyes. The boy held the hands of the girl and showed the chair next to him to sit down. The girl sat down. The boy said, My research is successful. The girl sounded excited and said, What did you say? Your research? Is it true? I don't know why. Why I can't believe it. 
The boy's face became bright. He said, Yes. I also did not think that I would achieve success so early, but I succeeded. I have named my invention, Mutagini. The girl danced in joy and said, Then we would become the richest in the world, the happiest too. The boy became serious and said, No, you are making a mistake. The girl put her head on his shoulders and said, Then? The boy now looked at the girl and said, Don't forget, a big power brings with it a big responsibility. First, I have to fulfill the responsibility and then only I can be fully successful. The girl intensely looked at the boy. Her hair spread over his shoulders. The boy kept on pressing the keys of the computer. After so much discussion about the boy and the girl, let us get introduced to them. The name of the boy is Johnson. Very ordinary looking, but a little taller than average boys. Slim figure, dusky complexion, wears spectacles, always with a smiling face. But sometimes, when he becomes unmindful, he looks serious. The girl, Cameron, her very look shows that she is a bit different from the others. Her face and eyes show deep confidence. She is only 15 years old. She comes from a very renowned, sophisticated family. Her father was once an important member of the International Security Council Force. The boy is 18 and the girl 15. Here one can get confused. Here one thing should be remembered. This age is not that young in the world after 100 years. Maybe the average age has reduced due to natural reasons or man's own mistake. Cameron is looking intensely at Johnson. Johnson is working on some machinery and she is closely observing that. Different pictures are displaying on the calendar-like computer screen. Johnson is waving his hands to explain several points and Cameron is noticing it with full concentration. The forces of nature around us can be regulated by our brain. It may sound like a riddle, but it is true. We can use a very small part of our brain. If we can utilize the majority of our brain, then we can assimilate the forces of our surrounding nature within our body. The human body is nothing but a programmed machine and all its mysteries are hidden in genes. If for any reason the genetic map is changed and the brain cells experience special changes, then we will be able to utilize the greater part of our brains and get a huge amount of energy. If we consider a DNA, its nitrogen base is connected to phosphate and its ribose sugar is connected to phosphate. This phosphate has to be transplanted with highly radioactive phosphate, which will result in mutation through radiation. In this way, a superhuman will be created through the process of mutation, whose brain will be adapted to a much greater power. He will be able to do many things, which will be unimaginable even in the world after hundred years. Mutagini is such an invention. After pressing a few keys, Johnson walked towards a big cupboard. Then he handed over a carefully kept small and glittering red stone to Cameron. On the stone it was written Mutagini in small letters. Johnson then said, the stone will be activated only after seven days. Then the stone will break after anyone touches it and a ray will come out of it. This ray will be able to transform any common man into an immensely powerful superhuman. Cameron was listening to the details of this amazing invention of Johnson with rapt attention. Her face 
was glowing in joy. Shankar Babu's travel into the future, science fiction. The invention of the time machine is a big event in the whole world, but the science fraternity has not yet accorded approval of its use. By testing it on different animals, it has been noted that in 99% cases the animals had died immediately. The race used in the time machine is very dangerous for the body. It has been tested with human beings also, but after using the time machine, the human beings had died immediately. The only exception being Mr. Shankar Bhakti. I will narrate his story to you. Shankar is my childhood friend. By using the time machine, he was stepped into the future world, but the rays used in the time machine had made his body very weak. Then he did not know that a huge change in the genetic map of his body has come over. In the future world, the oxygen dissolved in the air is not suitable for the use of human beings, so human cannot reside on the land mass. The human resides in the space and in the depths of the ocean. They respire with the help of artificial oxygen. The humans themselves have made the air of this world so poisonous that it is no more suitable for human respiration. In the future world, world of UAC army found Shankar in half dead condition. Thereafter, they took Shankar with them to space. Shankar was treated for a year in the secret hideout in space of the UAC army. After that, he regained consciousness. A change has come over in the genetic map of Shankar's body. Some superhuman type powers have been noticed in him. Shankar can activate most part of his brain simultaneously and can control the natural forces with his brain. In those times, the AUG army of the world used to reside in the depth of the ocean. They used to torture the common people. The head of that AUG army was Miss Teresa William. Her sister's name was Miss Renessa William. At that time, Renessa William was captive in the hands of the UAC, that is the International Safety Council. Then the USC army chalked out a plan to defeat the AUG army. They imprisoned Shankar Bhakti along with Renessa William. There Shankar and Renessa became friends. With the help of Shankar, both of them escaped from there. Both Shankar and Renessa entered the secret hideout of the AUG army in the depth of the sea. There Shankar and Teresa became friends. Since Shankar had some superhuman type characteristics, he would always attract everyone's attention. He could travel faster than the speed of sound. He could snatch the strength of other creatures and humans and accumulate it in his own body. As he had the superhuman time characteristics, Shankar was appointed in a senior position in the AUG army within a very short period of time. However, according to the pre-plan, Shankar joined the AUC army and betrayed Teresa and Renessa. He informed the USC army about all the secret hideouts of the AUG army. The UAC army destroyed most of the secret hideouts of the AUG army. Shankar sent the headquarters of the AUG army in a different dimension through the black hole entrance machine. He sent it into the black dark world from where they would never be able to return to our dimension. 
both Teresa and Renessa died in the battle with the UAC army. Some members of the AUG army, however, had fled, though that number is very little. The UAC army thanked Shankar. He then requested the UAC army that he wished to return to his time with the help of the time machine. The UAC army made arrangements for Shankar to return to his time with the help of the time machine. However, when Shankar returned to our time, he did not possess any superhuman characteristics. Seven days after returning to the present world, he expired. Who can travel in time? For how long can he travel? For how many days will we stay alive? What changes in the universe will be made by him? All these are perhaps limited by one specific rule. What event will happen in this universe? By whom will that happen? Why will it happen? The place, time and character are specific. The event that has happened will not change so by time travel the events that have taken place through Shankar were perhaps predestined. All the events are limited by a specific rule. We cannot violate that rule according to our wish by time travel. This event that is happening or will happen will not change. God and Demon, a modern mythology. Where the gods, demons and other supernatural powers that we get mention of in our mythological stories really creatures from different planets? Or it can also be that they were developed species of humans of the future. They had come in our times by traveling on the time machine. During the ages of the Puranas, those people who could control the natural energy with the help of their brain were called gods and demons. In science fiction stories, those people are called superhuman and supervillain. God has created this universe. He has created this galaxy and our world. Devil has created the black hole and a dark world inside the black hole. Gods only worship the divine. On the other side, the demons worship only the devil. In our Puranas, it has been found that the gods are always fighting with the demons. The brains of both are very developed. They can use most of their brains, so they can control the natural forces with their brains. They cannot be killed with ordinary weapons. Now we will have to notice main reason why the gods and the demons fought so much. The gods had Amrit with them, which the demons did not have. This Amrit was the main reason of their fight. What was Amrit? Not many know about this clearly. Amrit is found in the depths of the sea. It is a biochemical liquid. Our body is made up of several lakh crores of cells. The intake of Amrit increases the life of these cells many times. So aging and death is stalled for an unlimited period. Hence the greed for this Amrit of the demons since the beginning. By drinking this Amrit, the demons want to attain permanent youth and immortality. The demons had a strange power. They could assimilate the strength of the defeated soldiers into their bodies. So the demons became even more powerful. The demons wanted to drive away the gods from heaven and enjoy the Amrit and the celestial nymphs. The king of the gods was Lord Indra. He was very powerful. With his brain, he could control the power of lightning. Indra had killed 
lakhs of demons with lightning strike. The demons restrained themselves from attacking the heaven in fear of Lord Indra and lightning strike. But some demons became so powerful that disregarding the fear of Lord Indra and other gods, they attacked heaven and became victorious. Shukracharya was a spiritual master of the demons. He had one unusual knowledge that was Murit Sanjeevani Mantra. With the help of this mantra, some herbs and with the DNA and vitality of a demon, he could create an exact clone of that demon. This way, he would bring back to life dead demons. In the stories of the Puranas, there is mention of Mrit Sanjivani Mantra, which is a form of yogic energy. That yogic energy could even bring back to life dead demons. To maintain balance between power of gods and demons, a Shura Guru Shukracharya was given Mrita Sanjeevani Mantra. This way, the demons defeated the gods and drove them away from heaven. Somehow, the gods managed to take the pot of Amrita with them. The gods were worshippers of beauty. In their court, several thousands of exquisitely beautiful nymphs used to present song and dance. As a result of drinking Amrit, old age could not touch them ever. One could not remove one's gaze after taking one look at these ever young nymphs. Sweet fragrance always emanated from the bodies of these nymphs. Since ages the demons had lust for these nymphs. So after winning the heaven, the demons captured these celestial nymphs and started ravishing them. The demons did not have the ability to respect and enjoy women and beauty. So in the hands of the demons, being victims of their lust, the lives of the nymphs had become like hell. In this manner, being captive with the demons, beauty gradually vanished from creation. Then, in order to save themselves from the demons, the gods took shelter in a blue planet. That blue planet is our earth. Here the gods created human beings first. Observing the genetic structure of humans, it is understood that the genetic structure of gods is very similar to genetic structure of humans. However, the average lifespan of humans is much less than that of gods. Immunity power compared to gods is insignificant. Humans can utilize only a few percentage of the brain, so they can never control the natural forces around with the brain. The gods had stayed in this earth several thousand years. Thereafter, they regained strength, attacked heaven, defeated the demons, drove them away from heaven and took control of heaven. When the gods left this earth, the condition of humans on this earth became very pathetic. Slowly the humans adapted to the conditions of this earth. The gods now are keeping watch on us. They are trying to awaken good sins in us. On the other side, the demons are very angry upon the humans. Humans are creations of gods, so the demons want the humans to fight among themselves and get destroyed. Gods and demons are still now hovering around us, but we will not be able to recognize them. There are still many stories about these gods and demons, which I will narrate to you later on. Goddess Durga and Mahishasura are modern mythology. This is a story of a long time ago. 
goddess durga had just started residing on mount kailash with her two sons that time the king of the demons was mahishasura he had come to our earth from a dark world inside the black hole with a particular purpose mahishasura wants to loot all the wealth of this earth indiscriminately he killed lakhs of humans he compelled lakhs of humans to accept the demons and the devil as their deity they captured lakhs of women to the demon women were object of lust they subjected the women to indescribable torture the god respected the women and considered them to be one form of nature the adi shakti is one women so the god worshiped women on the other hand the demons considered women only to be object of lust and always preferred to keep women under veils that time due to torture of the demons shouts for help would be heard everywhere seeing such scenes goddess durga could not remain still so she requests lord shiva to stop mahishasura in any manner possible lord shiva meets mahishasura but he does not listen to lord shiva and suddenly attacks him thus injuring him goddess durga cannot restrain herself at the audacity of mahishasura and picks up her weapons with her sons kartik and ganesh she attacks mahishasura goddess durga was extremely powerful for several hundred years the fight between devi durga and mahishasura continued at the end mahishasura was killed at the hand of goddess durga after the death of mahishasura peace returned to the earth since then goddess durga is known as durgati nashini mahishasura mardini devi durga on the mortal world